Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorials, we took a look as to how we can go ahead and what are different types of attack, what are the different layers of attack and how people normally go ahead and DDoS a particular computer or a system or a network. So in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you uh, about how we can go ahead and identify the DDoS attacks and prevent ourselves from them. And yes. A DDoS attack is not only done on a Wi-Fi on a uh, wireless network, not exactly wireless. The proper term would be that DDoS attacks are not only done over the internet through uh, on a wired connection or on a web website only. It's also done on a computer or Wi-Fi network to go ahead and crash the Wi-Fi network and uh, let it reboot again so that uh, the password may get disrupted and the person will then have access to the network. So if you run your own servers, then you need to be able to identify when you are under attack. That's because the sooner you can establish that problems with your website, DDoS attack, the sooner you can try to do something about it. To be in a position to do this, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with the typical inbound traffic profile. Now that means you need to know from where exactly the traffic is coming in. It is, a, is it the common way from where all, uh, always the traffic comes in or is it coming on the same port from where you normally use, uh, which you normally use it. Let's say for example, you don't always need to go ahead and use the same port like 120 or 140 or 150, whichever you're using. You can use any like, normal number of port like such as 2137 or any random number. Never use the same numbers for the port such as 2222 or 3333 because it's quite easy for the attackers to guess that and actually go ahead and attack you. So the more you know about what your normal traffic looks like, the easier it is to spot on whether it's an attack or it's just a normal profile trying to access some random stuff. So most DDoS attacks start as sharp uh, spikes in traffic and helps to be able to tell the difference between a search, a sudden search of legitimate visitors and the start of a DDoS attack. So, and it's also a good idea to nominate a DDoS leader in your company who is responsible for acting uh, uh, that in case you are under attack. And there should always be over provision bandwidth with your company. It generally makes sense to have more bandwidth available to your web server than you ever think you are likely to need. And that way you can accommodate sudden and unexpected surges in the traffic that could be a result of an advertising campaign or any random stuff and a special offer or even a mention of your company in the media would be would suffice that even if you over provision the traffic by 100 percent or let's say by 500 percent let's say you need approximately of 10 gb uh, per month but you go ahead and uh, you, uh, get an over provision of approximately 50 gb every month that uh, likely won't stop a DDoS attack, but it may give you a few extra minutes to act before your resources are overwhelmed. So you need to make sure that you already have a backup uh, of something in case uh, something goes wrong on your website or someone is actually trying to DDoS or hack into your website. And you need to make sure that they also work offline, not just online. Or they have some kind of internet speciality that even if uh, a system goes offline, you will still be able to work offline even without uh, that specific web page so that it does not harness your productivity. There are a few technical measures that can be uh, taken to go ahead and run from that attack actually, especially in the first few minutes. And some of these are quite simple. For example, you can rate limit your router to prevent your uh, web server being overwhelmed and filters to tell you whether your router to drop the packets from obvious source of attack or time out them or have open connections more aggressively. You can also drop spoofed or malformed packages which are set lower such as SYN, ICMP and UDAP flood drop thresholds. But the truth is that while these steps have been effective in the past, DDoS attacks are now usually too large for these measures to have any significant effect. Again, the most you can hope for is they will buy a little time as an attack ramps up, as the attack ramps up. And finally, you can go ahead and always call your ISP or the hosting provider. And the next step is to go ahead and call your ISP provider or host provider if you do not host your own web server. Tell them that you are under attack and ask for help. Keep emergency contacts for your ISP or hosting provider readily available so that you can use this very quickly. Depending on the strength of attack, the ISP or the hoster may already have detected it or they may themselves start to be overwhelmed by the attack as well. In case uh, the person is actually quite strong who is actually doing the DDoS attack, is attacking you as well as the ISP provider also. 
So you stand a better chance of um, with, uh, withstanding reduced attack if your web server is located in a hosting center rather than if you run it yourself. That's because its data center will likely have fair high capacity bandwidth links and higher capacity routers than your uh, company has itself. And its staff will probably uh, have more experience dealing with the attacks. Having your web server located with a hoster will also keep DDoS traffic aimed at your web server of the uh, corporate LAN. So at least that part of your business including email and possibly voice over IP addresses via IP services should operate normally during an attack as well. And if attack is large enough, the first thing a hosting company or ISP is likely to do is null uh, route your traffic which results in packets destined for your web server being dropped before they arrive. And it can be very costly for a hosting company to allow a DDoS attack onto their network because it consumes a lot of bandwidth and it can affect other consumers. So the first thing we might say is uh, it's a black hole for a while. It is a most famous term used by Liam uh, and Tignap, a network operating engineers at Peer1 Hosting. And uh, there's also a, a managing director of ISP and hosting that is Timpad, the FCC providers agrees that the first thing that we need to do when we see a customer under attack is log on to our routers and stop the traffic getting on to our network. He says because that takes about two minutes to propagate globally using border gateway protocol and then the traffic falls off. So if that was the end of the story then the DDoS attack would be successful uh, to get the website back online your ISP or hosting company may direct your traffic or divert your traffic to a scrubber when the malicious packets can be removed before the legitimate ones are sent to on your web browser. So we use our experience and various tools to understand how the traffic to our website uh, has changed from what it was seeing before and to identify the malicious packets. And uh, there's also a famous quote uh, said by the guy at Pier1 that has uh, it has the capacity to take in, scrub and send on very high levels of packets of traffic as much as 20 Gbps. But with the levels of traffic comparable to those experienced by spammers, even the uh, scrubbing effort would likely be overwhelmed. So uh, do have a DDoS play a plan uh, or prevention plan in place with your ISP or a hoster so that it can be prevent or begin mitigation or divert your traffic into a mitigation specialist with the minimum delivery delay. And lastly we have our own legal use of DDoS attack. The people, the government uses DDoS attack to go ahead and target another companies or another, uh, not actually companies, other country server to go ahead and gather information or a national being a national spy agency or something. And uh, it's also used to go ahead and stress in stress testing whether to see whether how much capacity your server is, has before it goes down or how much can it take before it actually shuts down and crashes the whole thing. It's also used to know exactly whether the company, uh, whether the uh, website or uh, the server can withstand such amount of traffic or uh, even after traffic, if, if they are somehow able to restore, what are the uh, ways that they can go and restore and how, can, how much can they actually protect the system after it has been restored, whether uh, the firewall is down after the DDoS attack or it can go ahead and lead to some kind of uh, privacy problem because if uh, the website is down and the people can easily get access into that, then anyone can go ahead and distribute or leak any kind of data that you have in the system. That is why. So these are the different types of attacks that can be done and these are different ways that can be used to go ahead and stop or use a DDoS, DDoS attack for your own purposes. And that is it for this tutorial and that would be end for the problem presentation for these tutorials and the next tutorial I'll be teaching you more about actually doing a DDoS attack in a Windows 7 or a Windows 2008 server and I'll be showing you multiple ways as to how we can go ahead and do that and I'll be looking at that in the next tutorial.